Hi and welcome to my video series on how to service a Z1000SX. In this video I'm going to show you how to check and lubricate your steering head bearings. One of the things that's called for every year on the service is to inspect the steering bearings for play and every two years to uh, take the bearings out and lubricate them. So I'm just going to show you how to check for bearing play. So with the bike um, securely jacked up, and as you can see I've got it jacked up quite securely, I've got it strapped down for safety. Um, we're just going to grab hold of the forks and firstly I'm going to pull and push the forks just backwards and forwards, so I'm just feeling for any free play and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them from side to side and what you're looking for here and what you don't want is any notchiness if you've got any notchiness then you're probably going to need new head bearings and luckily mine feel good and then like I say just pull and push just for any free play and the ideal adjustment is you don't want it so loose that you've got play but you don't want it too tight either so you're also feeling for excessive tightness I mean they tend to wear loose because they just wear but you know you never know if someone might have tightened them up too much but that feels pretty good but we're going to be taking it all apart anyway first job we're going to do is we're going to remove the front screen uh, in the service manual Kawasaki recommend that you take off the front upper fairing I'm going to try and do that without taking the fairing off and we'll see how that goes so there's just six uh, Allen bolts to take the screen off first. And it's probably a good idea to wrap this in something protective. I've put a towel on the fuel tank to protect it. You could remove it. I think I'm going to leave this on and see how we go. And I've also put a towel over the clocks and upper fairing. Um, I'm going to uh, show you a little cheat hopefully. Um, you're supposed to take the whole, if you read the workshop manual, you're supposed to strip the whole grip, switch gear, clutch lever, brake lever, master cylinder, all that's supposed to come off. I'm just going to undo the bolts that hold the whole handlebar to the top tree or upper stem if you like and we're going to put it over onto the fairing and cable tie it to the mirrors. It's a good idea before we take the handlebars off and before we raise the bike to undo this top cap nut because it's quite tight. You'll need a 12mm Allen key and quite a substantial bar. And then I'm just going to brace the handlebar with one hand and as you can see that's quite tight. We're going to undo this uh, cable clip which is a 5mm Allen key. So you need to be careful you're not going to scratch your forks. So we can get that out of the way. The other thing I'm going to do before I raise the bike up is I'm going to undo the front wheel spindle because that will probably be quite tight. 6mm Allen key, just slacken these off. And then it's a 14mm Allen key for the spindle. Got two bolts to undo on the handlebar. One's a 4mm hex key and one's a 6. Got a shoulder on it because it kind of locates the handlebar. And then we can just slacken this one off. And now you can see why I wanted to slacken off the top stem nut first because now this all moves. You get yourself a cable tie. Gently manoeuvre this off. There's a bit of a struggle but you can do it and then we're just gonna pop that over here like that and then I'm just gonna cable tie that round to secure it in place and 
something like that and that shouldn't go anywhere and I've got the towel there to protect the mirror. So exactly the same as the other side, first of all I've got to take the cable tidy off. So 5mm Allen key, just to get that off from underneath the handlebar. And then I'll show you, I just slip this off, just holds all your cables and wires neatly. You might just need a slightly longer extension to get down onto this bolt nicely or fix in. And then just crack the 6mm off that holds it around the fork tube. Just a word of caution here, you ideally want to keep this brake master cylinder as upright as you can, just so you don't introduce any air into the system. And again, like we did on the other side, just gonna, it's a bit fiddly, obviously if you have two people it would be easier, but you can do it on your own. Just gonna cable tie that round onto the mirror stalk, just to keep it secure, that shouldn't go anywhere. So we're just going to slacken off these two 6mm um, allen keys, they'll probably be a little tight. Make sure you get the allen key in there nice and square, you don't want to round it off. So we'll just slacken those off now. I'm going to leave those like that for the moment. We're going to have to remove the brake calipers. So all we've got to do is undo this clip here, these two 12mm bolts here. But firstly you want to get yourself a cable tie, I've got two joined together. Just going to put it through that radiator bracket there, and get it ready. So the idea is when I take the caliper off I've got somewhere to hang it. So I'll just unclip this clip, like that. Crack these bolts off. And as you can see, the wheel's moving slightly. It's always good practice to make sure that the bike is securely supported because you don't want it falling on you and you certainly don't want to damage your pride and joy. So, just get these bolts out. And then just need to be careful as you take the caliper off. You might just want to move it side to side slightly just to push the pistons back and make it easier to get it off and it's, they do get really close to the back of the wheel so you just have to be a bit careful taking it off and then hopefully we can just pop that through one of the mounting holes like that there we go and then that's just supported the, the last thing you want to do is put any strain on that brake hose I won't show you the other side, but it's exactly the same. Now I'm going to remove the front fender. It's just two bolts each side to remove. Uh, five millimeter hex. It does say in the service manual that you're supposed to take these clips out. I personally find them quite awkward. So I'm going to show you a method of getting the front fender out just with a bit of manipulation. Need to do is you're just gonna bring it forward and kind of twist it and take one of these clips past the fork leg first like that and then the other one like that and obviously take good care of it while it's off the bike so it doesn't get scratched or damaged. So I've got the bike jacked up now so the wheel's spinning free ready to remove and just show you how I've achieved that. I've got a beam jack just underneath on the exhaust and I've got a couple of bits of wood on like the factory lifting point that's on the side of the sump. We previously undid these uh, fixings whilst it was on the ground, so I'm just going to wind these out a little bit. You don't need to take these right out. So I'm just loosening those so I know they're loosened off. Uh, we're just going to undo the axle for the wheel now. I've just got a bit of wood underneath just to take the weight, because obviously that will drop down when we take the axle out. Pull that out. 
There it goes. Just using a bit of wood helps you control it better. Now we're ready to remove the front wheel, so we'll just take that forwards like that. Right, we're ready to take the fork legs out now. Um, I just had to undo and loosen off the bolts for the header tank or reserve tank so I can access this bolt. So I've just cable tied that up to the upper fairing bracket. And as earlier we undid the top 6mm Allen key bolt. Obviously when you undo these two it will probably fall out so you just need to brace it. Might be stuck in there, I'm not sure yet. So we just need to undo these two Allen bolts here. So I'm just going to crack that off and uh, get ready to catch the fork. There we go, she's falling out already. And then just gently twist that out. Like that. There we go. And just, uh, you can see I've put a towel down just to try and protect them a little bit. Let's remove the top tree or the upper stem, whatever you want to call it. So we'd already slackened this nut off earlier. Get that out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is get myself a couple of cable ties. Just go through there. So all I want to do is hold this out of the way so we can get to the top two nuts. This might be a bit tight on your machine. Just have to be a bit careful. Just go through that hole. And then... Like that. And it just holds that out of the way and then we can get to the top two nuts. Last thing we need to do before we take the steering stem out is undo this 8mm bolt. And we'll just do that. It just holds the brake hoses up onto the bottom there. We're finally ready to take the steering stem off now. You're going to need a couple of specialist tools. You can use a drift and a hammer. I bought myself, I got it on eBay, it's just a socket with cutouts that will fit the nut. And I've got a C-spanner that kind of fits as well. So you've got a lock nut, a tab washer and then the, the other nut. There's two little tabs that we need to bend back. So I'm just going to use a small screwdriver and a hammer. And just bend these back. And there's one just the opposite side. Like that. Now we can just remove the top nut. This one's actually loose. If not, you'd have to use a drift or a punch or the tool, whatever you want to use. Don't know how tight this is going to be. Yeah, that's a bit tight. So we need a ratchet and extension. Once you've cracked it off, so I'm just going to, whilst I'm supporting with my other hand the steering stem from underneath the bike, torch has fallen down. And now we're ready to take this out. And then we're just going to gently pull the brake hoses out of the way and manoeuvre the steering stem down. Like that, just twist it out. So now we've got to the bearings. The first job we're going to have to do is clean them and inspect them for any pits or dings or any flaking. I'm going to use some brake cleaner just to um, blast the old grease away. I'll just take that off of there. You want to get all that old crappy grease out, make sure everything's nice and clean. So you just want to inspect the running surfaces to make sure there's no pits. Right, well I've got the bearings off and cleaned them up. Um, and as you can see, even though it didn't feel notchy on the bike, there is some pitting. And you can actually feel with the screwdriver that they are indented slightly. So these bearings are toast. So I'm going to have to replace them. So I've got some replacement bearings and as you can see, these are the original Kawasaki ones, which are roller bearings, like that. Uh, and these are taper roller. I haven't gone for OE Kawasaki because they're really expensive. So these are all balls. 
So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to remove the old inner bearing race off the steering stem. Now, there's a variety of different ways you can do this. Some people will cut through with a Dremel carefully, which I haven't got access to one at the moment. Um, you can get bearing pullers, which I also haven't got. In the service manual it says to use a chisel, so what I've done is I've just put some duct tape on there to try and protect the finish of the uh, bottom stem there. And we're just going to see if we can just gently tap this up. You will ruin this dust seal. You have to tack it from both sides. You just have to gently work it. It helps if you've got a selection of chisels, so you can just keep working up with different sizes. And then just keep working it and turning it. There she goes. There we go. I'm just show you how to pack a tape of roller bearing. You see I've already done one. Just get like a golf ball size of grease in your hand and then you just want to run the bearing into the grease. You're just forcing the grease into the... so it gets all behind the rollers. Just keep going round and that sort of motion like that. Until you're happy that you've got it. As much grease in there as you can. There we go. So we're getting ready to fit the bearing on the bottom of the stem. In your kit you should have a new dust seal. So I'm just going to pop a bit of grease on that. Just to lube it up a little bit. So we'll pop that on. That goes on with the lip facing upwards. Don't fit it the wrong way. And then to fit the bearing, you're going to need some sort of drift or tool because what you don't want to... I'll just grab a bearing quickly. When we knock it on, we want to act on this inner race, not on the outer race. I luckily got someone to make me up something very good friend of mine that's got a lathe because I couldn't find anything that would slide over this stem so it's 30, uh, 35 millimetres diameter that is so make sure you fit your bearing on the right way so it points upwards and slide that on like that and ideally you want to have this supported on a bit of wood so I'm going to put my little drift on there and then you're going to need some form of tube. I mean, I've used in the past vacuum cleaner uh, tubes. I've used bits of plastic pipe. But I borrowed something from work that hopefully will allow me just to knock that on. And you just want to support the bottom of the stem so you don't drive it out through the uh, bottom of the uh, tree. And then we're just going to knock that on. Well, that is in the right place. And you can hear there from the note that's changed. So that's on. Right, we need to knock out the old outer races out of the headstock. Luckily on this bike, Kawasaki have provided us with some cutouts, which I'll try and show you. you just see there, there's a cutout and there's one the opposite side, and the same for this top race. 
And you can either use something like that, which is a long parallel pin punch, or I'm going to be naughty and I'm just going to use a long screwdriver because it's just that little bit longer. And just in that, in that cut out, just working alternately from side to side. You just got to walk the race out. There we go, that's one out. And that's the race just knocked out. And as you can see, there's actually pit marks in that one as well. So doing the same again. It's a lot more awkward doing the top one. You just locate your drift or your punch on those cutouts and gently tap it up from side to side. Now we need to push the new outer races in. You can either tap them in with a pin punch, use a bearing push. I'm going to pull them in with a bit of threaded rod and some sleeves. So we'll pop that in there like that. I'm going to pop that up through there. You want to take your time getting it all set up ready so make sure that you've got everything where you need it to be so we're looking to get that bearing nice and square yeah I think that's going in nicely know when it's home because it will just go tight as you can see that race is going in quite nicely and that's gone tight now so I'm not going to go anymore all right so just to give you an overview so I've got a bit of threaded rod going through the whole headstock. I've got uh, just a bearing uh, race installer just flipped over to give me a flat surface. And then down here, you can see that I've got the bottom race just in and I'm using a, another bearing race installer. And we're just gonna wind that up and then to pull that in flat. And then what I will do is I will use this, which fits my bearing up in there to finish off. There we go. So both races are now fitted in the headstock. I've just put some more grease on this bearing, so I'm just going to put this underneath the bike and just put it into place. And I've got my top bearing here, which again I've greased up. Pop that in there like that, and then we can put the top nut on. Okay, so having refitted the steering stem, I'm just going to rotate it backwards and forwards four or five times and just, just get a rough adjustment on the bearing just to get all that grease evenly distributed. And just sort of adjust it up as you go, not too tight. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to temporarily fit the fork legs just so we can adjust the um, head bearings up. So don't worry about getting the height right or anything yet, because we'll redo that.
we might be able to see the old tide marks where they sat. So now I'm ready to adjust the head bearings and I'll just, you just need to be careful of this top tree because you can't get it right out of the way when you're moving the forks side to side it will hit it so just be careful of that and I'll just show you what I mean about adjustment at the moment I've got that backed off and you can see by going backwards and forwards and this is why I've put the fork legs back in that that's too much too much free play and what we're aiming for is we're aiming for the fine line between no free play but that the steering is not too tight and it is one of those things that you can only really do by feel so just keep working it but you don't want these bearings too tight because you will overload the bearings if you tighten them up too much and I think I'm quite happy with that, it's nice and free we will do a final test uh, when we've fully assembled the front end once you're happy with the adjustment of your head bearings, put your lock washer on, top nut, now we just need to tighten this up so we can line up the tabs on the lock washer with the top nut, so I'm just going to use a C spanner to hold the bottom nut because I don't want that to move, and then I'm just going to Oh, tighten that up. And I think that's no, got a bit more to go. And then you can just bend your tab washers up to lock the top nut. So I'm just going to take the forks back out now. The only reason for this really is because the way I've taken the top bridge off, you can't get it on that easily. And at the end of the day, we only did nip these up for our adjustment. So I'm going to cut the cable tie that I've got here, holding this top stem out of the way. Get that out of the way. And then we can refit that on there. Like that. Just gonna fit this nut loosely, or this bolt. Now I'm gonna start to fit the forks. Now next thing we need to do is we need to set the height that these forks come through the top and the factory spec is 28 millimetres. So I'm going to use a pair of digital verniers and we're just going to set the height like that and then you can nip up the top bolt there. You want to leave the bottom ones loose until we've talked up that nut. Having got the fork heights correct, I'm now going to torque the upper pinch bolts. Remember at this stage the lower ones are still loose. So that's 20 newton meters for these. And we're just going to torque those up. That's one. That's two, and now we can torque up the upper bolt, which is 108 newton meters. So make sure obviously that the bike is secure. And that's why we've left the lower fork ones loose, because as we tighten this up, it's actually gonna push the forks down a little bit. So we're just gonna have to there we go. Next thing to do is just tighten up your lower fork clamp bolts, 20 newton meters. So we'll just torque those up. Okay. 
And of course, don't forget the little bolt that holds the uh, brake flexi up onto the lower forks. Before you refit the front wheel, just two things to note. There is a directional rotation arrow, so that's got to point forwards. And then secondly, it's a good idea, I've already done these, to just clean these collars, they're the same both sides, and just coat the lip of the seal with some grease. So now I can refit the wheel, so I'm just going to lift it up into position. I've greased my axle, cleaned and greased my axle up. And just slide that through. You might find it a bit fiddly to get the, it started, but just persevere and you'll get it. Right, I'm only going to nip this up for now. I'm not going to talk it up till the bike's back on the ground. But that will do for a moment. So now we can refit the brake calipers. I've just cut the cable tie that supports that. And then we just need to get this on. Obviously you need to be careful of the wheel because it's quite a tight clearance there. And you want to chip your wheel. So just open up your brake pads. They should still be where they were when you took the caliper off. And then there's two little locating dowels. I always put a bit of copper slip on the shank of the bolt, not the threads. Just to make sure they're not going to seize in. And then finally, don't forget to torque the brake caliper up, 34 newton meters. Don't forget to fit the reservoir tank back, so just one 10mm bolt that goes in there. I'll just do that up. Now you can refit your front fender, so like we did when we took it off, we're just going to offer it up and just walk it past the forks and just sort of twist it to one side. Like that. There we go, we're in. Then you've just got the four bolts that hold it on. So get it in the right place. I've put a little bit of copper ease on these threads because I don't want them to seize in. And then we're just going to nip these up. The torque figure for these is apparently 3.9 newton meters, so it's not a lot. As you can see I'm just holding the ratchet at the top so I don't over tighten them. And then all we need to do if you just go that way slightly, you've got the, you've got to lock your brake flexes back in. Now the lock part of this faces backwards, and you can see there's a nice rubber grommet for that to go in. That's it. Just clip them in, make sure they're secure. Now we can refit our handlebars, so I'm just going to cut the cable tie. And then we can gently swing this over. So as I showed you when we took it apart, the bolt that locates the handlebar has got a special shoulder on it. So we're just going to pop that in the hole, start it, and then as you can see it sort of locates that shoulder. Right now we're ready to torque the two bolts up that hold the handlebar holder on. According to the factory manual, the torque for both these bolts is 25 newton meters. Well this little bolt here is only like an M6 thread, I don't think that will take 25 newton meters but you want to do this one up first so it pulls the handlebar down so I'm just going to do this up by hand I'm using a little quarter drive ratchet so I'm just going to do that as tight as I dare and then I'll torque the main clamp bolt up to 25 
go. And then we can refit the uh, right hand side assembly. Remembering to keep this upright as we can so we don't introduce any air into the system, otherwise you're going to have to bleed the brakes. You just have to be careful when you do it up that the shoulder of the bolt goes down through the handlebar, else it won't do up properly. And again, I'm just going to nip that up as tight as I dare. And then we'll torque the main stem bolt up. Okay, so there's two things we still need to do. Firstly, we need to pump the uh, front brake lever because we pushed the pads back when we took the calipers off. So you want to do that now. And then secondly, if you remember, the axle bolt and the two clamp bolts are still loose. So we just need to pump the forks up and down sort of four or five times just to get everything in line and seated. Now we can torque up the axle, which is 108 newton meters. And then lastly, the two pinch bolts, which are 20 newton meters. Now we've got to fit the cable tidies. So remember they fit underneath the handlebar. So just gonna slide that around all the wiring. So just to show you a, a good view of that cable tidy, you can see there's two holes, it goes on the inner hole. Just to say there is a little stop, so you just need to push that along so it sort of touches the fork or the top tree if you like. So you try and be careful, you can hear I'm just gently touching my forks, but try not to damage them and then I'm just going to nip that up. Now you can refit your front screen. Don't forget the little plastic washers that go under the bolts. And again, you only want to nip these. I don't need to be super tight. It's snug. So now I've got everything back together. I'm just going to do a final check of the steering head bearings to make sure I'm happy. So I'm just going to push and pull, and I can't feel any play. And then just make sure there's no tightness. Remember, you will get the cables and stuff around the forks might give you a little bit of the sense that it's binding. But that's quite nice and loose. And remember that they will bed in. So you want to check these again after about. 200 miles and if they need readjusting then you have to readjust them. Okay that's the head bearings completed. Unfortunately in my case I had to replace my head bearings. Normally if you're lucky then you'll just be regreasing them. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Till next time ride safe and work safe and join me in the next video in this series.